A warm welcome to all of you to another lecture on this course on simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. Till now, we have looked at uh, generating random variables from different distributions in MATLAB and uh, we have seen how can we use the rand command which is the uniform distribution to generate samples from any distribution. Now, in this lecture, we will talk about how do we interpret these random numbers and uh, how do the laws of large numbers which are uh, fundamental to the understanding of probability theory work in these cases. So, random numbers, a sequence of random numbers or multiple random numbers can be treated or can be thought of in two ways. One, each random number generated in a sequence of random numbers or in a random vector can be thought of as a separate random variable or one realization of a random variable having the said one realization of a random variable having the set distribution and it can also be treated as one sample or these can each from the same distribution. So, one sample each from the same distribution. So, right now you might be asking that uh, how do these uh, de definitions make a difference. So, we will use both of these definitions extensively for the rest of this course to make sense of or to use random numbers for simulation. So, to start we will demonstrate the laws of large numbers using random numbers or using random number generation. The first law of large numbers that we are going to talk about which we will not simulate is the Chebyshev's inequality which says that if x is a random variable with mean mu and variance sigma square then probability of the absolute value of x minus mu being greater than epsilon is this. So, we, since we are not going to demonstrate this using MATLAB, we will simply prove this. So, we say that variance of x equals, so this should be uppercase x integral from minus infinity to infinity x minus mu whole square x of x dx equals sigma square greater than equal to x minus mu greater than epsilon square dx naturally this is greater than the first term and this is greater than or equal to epsilon square dx epsilon so the probability of minus mu epsilon and Hence, this is uh, Chebyshev's inequality is proven. We are not going to do a simulation based proof of this. What we are going to talk about next is the sample mean. So, let x1, x2, xn be iid random variables. iid, I will elaborate independent and identically distributed random variables each having a mean mu and variance sigma square then this x bar is the sample average of x 1 to x n and is given as this 1 over n times uh, the sum of this. So, 1 over time n times the sum of x i which is straightforward. Then, since the expectation operator is linear, it is easy to show that x bar equals expected value of 
1 over or expected value of x bar this so the expected value of x bar is mu similarly since these are independent terms variance of x bar will be 1 over n square variance of since these are independent so x1 square plus variance of x2 and so on equals 1 over n square n times sigma square equals sigma square by n so the average or the sample average of n random variables also has the same mean but it has a variance that goes down with n which makes sense so the first thing is that uh, this is a random variable so the sample average is a random variable the sample average is a random variable and it has a mean that stays fixed and an and a variance that goes down as uh, 1 over n so let us try to simulate this or let us try to simulate this result so let me create a new file so simulation of sample mean and let me call this samp mean so let us average this out over 10,000 realizations. So, so, let us average this over 10,000 realizations and let us say we want to inspect this behavior over up to 1,000 samples. So, want to inspect of the sample mean over these many samples then in order to inspect the behavior of the sample mean what we will do is for c1 equals 1 to n let x be rand random gaussian let's keep this gaussian so and sm c1 b mean of x so this so what this will do is generate m realizations of n variables so our two definitions of the random variables come into play or two definitions of the random numbers come into play so the rows here are different instantiations or the different realizations of uh, the same random variable and the columns in this case will be the multiple different uh, random variables that are independent and identically distributed so generate m realizations of n random variables so the inbuilt matlab mean so the matlab mean function matlab function lets The above create the above will create m instantiations of sample average for 
C1. So actually this is wrong and this should have been C1 of C1 random variables. M instantiation of sample average for C1, sample average of C1, C1, IID. So the above will create M instantiations of sample average of C1 IID random variables. So this and when I run this SM, let me initialize SM, SM equals zeros. the c one column of SM will be length M and will contain these M stations, the sample length m and will contain these m manifestations of the sample average of c1 variables. So if I run this, this is an error, ah yes, so I made a mistake and I should have defined the dimension correctly, yes, so this it will take a while to run and uh, we can possibly terminate this and just make this over 100. That will also work fine and it has run. So, yes, so SM is sample mean of, so variance of S SM, if I try to find out so this and let me try to find out the variance of SM transpose. So now basically let me explain this structure new slide. So SM is basically Ten thousand or sorry, hundred realizations of sample mean for one instance or for one random variable and hundred realizations Okay, so uh, this needs to be, yes, this needs to be corrected. This and And run, yes. So that uh, error has been resolved. SM is so each column, so this 100 realizations for the sample mean of 1000 random variables. So this is there. Now, if I calculate the variance of all of these, uh, that will be the sample variance, but if I still calculate the variance of all these entries column by column then I will get the variance, I will get a row vector of SM will be a row vector containing the variance of sample mean of I entries in its ith column or as its ith entry. So let us 
do that and let us calculate the variance of S1, variance of Sn and so this gives me a, so let me plot variance of Sn. Number of samples. Pupil, I'll put the variance and I'll run this. So this isn't uh, exactly appreciable right away. So what we'll do is we'll use another form of plot, which is known as the log log plot, or rather I'll use semi log y. So, semi log y means the y axis is in the log scale and the x axis is in the linear scale. So, if I plot a semi log y plot here, we see that it decreases like this, but there is a lot of jitter. So, I will plot a log log plot here now. We will still see a lot of jitter, but uh, now this goes down linearly as n or this goes down linearly as the number of samples, which is as per our, our expectations. So, both the number of samples and the variance are in the log scale, but uh, you see a lot of jitter. This lot of jitter is because we are using the sample variance again. So, if we want to reduce this jitter, we will have to spend 10 times the time, possibly wait a while, while this uh, regenerates and it will take 10 times the time as compared to the last time while this plot regenerates and uh, yes. So, we spent 10 times that time, but uh, now you can see that the jitter in the lines have uh, reduced has reduced significantly. I can uh, further reduce this, this jitter by simulating and averaging this over multiple realizations, but uh, that would unnecessarily take up a lot of time and so we do not want to do that. So, this was about sample mean. And the next thing that uh, we are going to talk about is the weak law of large numbers. So, I will possibly use the more conventional definition of the weak law of large numbers. So, if x1, x2, xn are n iid Bernoulli variables are in ID Bernoulli random variables such that expected value of x i equals probability of x i plus 1 equals p and s n equals summation i goes from 1 to n x i then limit n tends to infinity 1 over n s n minus p tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. So, let us now try to implement this. So, let us now try to verify. So, we have seen that uh, we can generate a Bernoulli random variable from uh, a uniform random variable just by thresholding. So, I will just reuse this code. So, I will simply say rename this file to weak law and again 1000 uh, realizations is good enough. We will go from 1 to 1000 again. Sn I will generate uh, like this and p equals 0 0.3 suppose and uniform so this 
this will generate the realizations of C1 and SM or SN equals minus P and let us run this it will take time so I would reduce this to 100 so this SN is naturally you can see a trend here but uh, let us plot the mean of the absolute value of SN and when I do this again you see that this rushes to 0 very quickly as N increases so which is according to the law of large numbers and uh, this verifies the weak law of large numbers. The last result that uh, we are going to talk about in this chapter is the central limit theorem. So, in a broad sense the central limit theorem says that if x1, x2, xn are iid random variables with mean mu and variance sigma square then sum of i goes from 1 to n xi for large n tends to n mu n sigma square or equivalently the sum of n in independent and identically distributed random variables tends to a Gaussian random variable x i tends to a Gaussian random variable with mean mu and variance sigma square by n. So, let us try to simulate this for different number of uh, random variables and uh, let us see what happens. So, let us try to verify the central limit theorem. So, we try to verify the central limit theorem. So, let us say x equals rand 1 comma 1000 comma 1 or even 10000 comma 1 hist x and if we see so and let us try to run this so when we run this we get this which is more or less uniform. So, for one random variable we get uniform. So, now let me change something and let us say sum u now I take two random variables two uniformly distributed random variables and take their sum or 1 by 2. and when I run this I see that the distribution is a Gaussian. Let me also display the mean and let 
say that number of terms I call that nt as 2 so 1 over nt and nt mean x and variance of x so let us keep a note of these numbers as well so what i'll do is i'll create a table here and possibly create a new slide search table that has three columns so yes and so n this one is mean and this one is variance so this i'll enlarge this table and we'll fix it on the right hand side of the desktop and fix this on the left hand side of the desktop both are visible so let's start at nt equals 1 it won't make sense because yeah, nt equals 1 so you get mean is 0 0.4955 and variance is so mean is approximately 0 0.5 and variance is and the plot is uniform so let us keep it here and let us try something slightly different so actually this and plot f i will hold on and so what this will do is legend so the legend will be so this i will run this so um, so, yes, so this is the legend and uh, this is fine. So, maybe we can increase this number to 100,000 and things will become slightly more stable. So, 083 and uh, these are the numbers, this is fine. So now let us try for nt equals 2. Uh, so, uh, this should be nt, not. So, this is nt, and let me run this. So, nt equals 1. We will first try nt equals 1 and then do nt equals 2. So, we have run this for nt equals 1, 0 0.083, the mean and the variance, and this is the probability or this is kind of the probability density function which is fixed at 1000. So, now let us repeat this for nt equals to number of trials and run this. So, you see another plot. So, on top of that you see another plot which corresponds to nt equals 2 and so matlab legend dot append. So, MATLAB that legends do not append themselves that is a problem. So, this blue line so I will possibly remove this legend part close this plot and manually explain what happens. So, nt equals 1 we will save and run it is there nt equals 2 we will save and run and since the probability density function of the sum of two random variables is their convolution. So, we can see that the resulting probability density function is like a convolution and we see the convolution of two uniforms which is a triangle. So, next let us try to do this for nt equals 3 or nt equals 3 gives us. So, the corresponding for nt equals 2 the mean is 0 0.5002 and the variance is 4 which is close to half of uh, 
the variance of this thing. So, you can already see that the mean and the variance hold. So, for n, n t equals 3, if we run this 0, 0 0.5, which is again 0 0.027, which is a third of 8.1 or 8.3, and actually it is a 0 0.83. And if I look at the plot, the plot now contains a third curve which looks slightly more Gaussian. So, let us try for nt equals 4. On trying for nt equals 4, what we get is 0 0.2 and 0 0.5. So, we will go up to 7 and this is for 4. So, for 4 you get more Gaussianity and let us go for 5, nt equals 5 gives this. So, 5 you get similar curve, it is tending towards Gaussian and you can naturally see 0 0.5 and 0 0.016 for 6 it will be even better. So, 6 0 0.4991 and 0 0.14 for 7. If I run this 0 0.0 and 0 0.4996, the corresponding plots. So, this is for n equals 1, this is for 2, this is for 3, for 4. 5, 6, the light blue is for 6 and for 7. So, you can see that even if we sum 5 I, IID uniform random variables, we get quite close to a Gaussian. So, this is uh, why we can invoke central limit theorem at a lot of places and when we talk about uh, actual simulation of communication systems, we will keep on invoking the central limit theorem time and again. So, this closes our discussion on random variables in general and Monte Carlo simulations in general and uh, specifically upon the laws of large numbers applied to random variables. The next chapter that we will talk about or the next uh, module for this uh, course is random processes that we will start in the next lecture. Thank you. Mm -hmm.